Hi, it's Miss Reese. I'm going over the Unit 5 test review. Okay, so we're going to do the left column together um, as a practice, and then you can try the right side, which is a similar question on your own. Okay, so in our first question, remember, anytime we're graphing something, we're solving by graphing, so we want to graph these, and they're in y equals mx plus b format. Remember, the b value is our intercept, our y-intercept at 0b. So for this equation here, my intercept is at, or my intercept is um, 0, negative 1. So I'm going to put a point at 0, negative 1. That's where I'd start the graph. And then my, this value here, that's my slope, my rate of change, um, vertical change over horizontal change. And so this is really an imaginary 1 there. So that means my slope is 1. And really, 1 is the same thing as 1 over 1. So we can put that 1 over 1. It means I go up 1 to the right 1. And I like to put several points on my line just to make sure my line is pretty accurate. I'm going to use my line tool here. Let's see. Uh, and if you have a ruler, it might make it a little more accurate, but it is more accurate the more points you put on it. So if you just put two points, um, your ruler might not be super accurate for that. And then let's do the next line. We have um, the equation y equals negative 1 over 4x plus 4. So we have a coordinate point at 0, 4 on the y-axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. And then our slope is negative. So instead of going up and right like we did in the first line, this is a positive slope. Um, a negative slope goes down to the right. So I can go down one to the right four. And that's actually going to intersect right on the next graph. Down one to the right, one, two, three, four. And then if you wanted to get more points, you could also go instead of down and right, the opposite of that is up and left, four. So I'll grab my line tool. And just so you know, the line does extend forever in both directions, so you can extend that as well. Take this line here. Oh, I meant to extend it. There we go. Okay, um, then just make sure you write out your solution for this system. Our solution is located right here. It's the point of intersection, and that would be at 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 3. So we'd write our solution as 4, 3. Um, so if you try one question one independently, it'll be very similar. You're just seeing where the lines intersect. Um, for question two, one of our equations is in slope intercept form already, and that's this first equation here. So we have our starting value at 0, 2, and we have our slope at negative 5 halves. So I'm going to start at 0, 2, and then I'm going to go down um, 5, 1, 2, 3, Oops, kind of the small grid, one, two, three, four, five, to the right, two. Erase some of those points. I'm just gonna put a point here, there we go. And then we can do that again, down, oops, right, two. And then I can go up five, one, two, three, four, five, left two. And we can draw a line that goes through that. Let me grab my line tool. Okay, so that is one of our lines. Um, now I just need to graph the other line. Um, the other line is not in slope intercept form. And actually, I'm going to re rewrite it down here. So we've got 9x plus 2y equals 12. So to graph this, let's get this in slope intercept form. I'm going to subtract a 9x on both sides minus 9x. That's because we want the y to be by itself. So that gives us 2y equals negative 9x plus 12. Those are not like terms. We can't combine them. And let's divide everything by 2. And that leaves us with y equals negative 9 over 2x plus 6. So for this graph, I'm going to start at 6. And I'm going to go down 9 into the right 2. And that's actually going to intersect right here at this point. So if I get my line tool, there we go. And then we can extend this first line here to go through the points. All right, so we have our point of intersection 
um, that would be located right here, and that's at 2, negative 1, 2, 3. So 2, 3 would be our solution. Okay, and then I just want to point something out. As you're graphing question B here, um, the sample problem on the right, um, just know that these are not going to intersect at an integer point. So I think they intersect at about, uh, it's about like negative 0 0.7, if I'm remembering correctly, and then about uh, 0 0.5. So just know that that's, um, you're not graphing those wrong, but we typically wouldn't have you graph something like that um, oops, if it was lines that don't intersect at an integer grid there at a lattice point. Um, but do know, so that one is incorrect. Or I'm sorry, it's not incorrect. It's just we typically wouldn't have you graph it that way. Um, so go ahead and graph them, and then you can just say, okay, that's you can point to the, the um, intersection point. Okay. Next line here, um, start at positive one on the Y line. So that means we have a point at zero, one. So I'll graph that at zero, one. And our slope is positive one over three. So that means I can go up one to the right three. I'll repeat that a few times. Down one to the left three. I can grab my line through that. And then with our other equation, we are going to want to put that into um, slope-intercept form. So we wanted to say y equals, let's subtract our x, bring that to the other side. That leaves us with negative 6y equals negative 2x plus 30. Divide everything by negative 6. And that's y equals negative 2 divided by negative 6. Negative divided by negative is positive. That is 1 third. And then... 30 divided by negative 6 is negative 5. So we have our intercept at negative 5, and the slope is the same. It's going up 1 to the right 3. So you'll notice with these two um, graphs, these lines are not intersecting each other. And so they're parallel, um, but we would actually say the solution, when we're writing out the solution, we would say no solution for this. There is no point of intersection no x, y value where those will be the same. Okay, And then our last graph here, we actually need to put both of these into slope-intercept form. So I'm going to start with this equation here. Um, I'm going to rewrite it. 2x plus y equals 8. To get y by itself, let's subtract a 2x on both sides. y equals negative 2x plus 8. Now it's set up to graph in slope-intercept form. We have a point starting at 8. Our slope is negative 2. We would say it's like negative 2 over 1, 2 over 1, so down 2 to the right 1. And you can just kind of keep repeating that process here. And for our next line, um, let's rewrite it. 6x plus 3y equals 24. And again, we need to move all of our x's to one side. That would give us 3y equals negative 6x plus 24 and then divide by 3. y equals negative 2x plus 8. Ooh, we've got the same exact equation. So we went, when we go to graph it, it's going to be the same line. So let me draw in my line here. And so when we have um, graphs that are the same line, we call that infinite solutions. Whoops. Infinite. All right, next we're solving by substitution. So substitution is basically when we replace something for, for something else. Um, so I'm going to take the value of y here, which is x plus 8, and I'm going to input that into the y in my other equation. So instead of y equals negative x plus 2, I'm going to replace that y. I'm going to rewrite that. So no y this time. I'm going to replace it with x plus 8. And then I'm going to put equals negative x plus 2. So we can basically set those equations together. Let's bring all of our x's to one side. I'm going to add an x to both sides. x plus x is 2x. We still have that 8. Then that thing happened to that. And then we still have a 2. And then we can subtract an 8 on both sides. That's going to give us 2x equals negative 6. 
and then divide by 2. x is negative 3. Okay, so our solution for x is negative 3. Now we need to find our solution for y. And you can do that by plugging it into either of the equations. Um, I'll just pick the top equation. I know y is equal to x plus 8. Instead of x, I'm going to replace it with negative 3 plus 8. So y equals um, 5. We'll plug that in here. Um, so substitution, you're sometimes going to have both equations solved for y. Here, we only have one equation solved for y. So I'm going to put the value of y into y of my other equations. So it's going to be 5x plus 2y. I'm not going to write y. I'm going to write the substituted value for y. Equal it to 7. We can go ahead and distribute here. And here that gives us 5x. And then we're multiplying 2 with negative 4. It would be negative 8x. And we're going to multiply 2 with 8. And we'll equal that to 7. Now because these terms are on the same side of the equation, they need to be combined with each other. Okay, so we're going to combine 5 minus 8. That's negative 3x. And then we still have that 16 equal to 7. And we can subtract 16 on both sides. And that's going to give us negative 3x is equal to negative 9. And x is equal to a positive 3. And now we'll solve for y. I would plug that into my y equation. Negative 4 times x plus 8. So y is negative 12 plus 8, which is negative 4. Okay. Um, here we have our x solved. So I'm going to put the value of x into x in my other equation. So instead of 3x, the x is now 2y plus 1 minus the 6y equals 3. And make sure we put that in parentheses because now we know we're distributing that. So that gives us 6y plus 3 minus 6y equals 3. And again, because this 6y and this negative 6y are on the same side, we're going to combine them. That's going to be 0y or it's just going to be 0. And then, then we're left with 3 equals 3. Well, that is a true statement. right? So this would be infinite solutions. If we were to graph these two equations or solve them both for x, whatever, solve them both for y, um, they would be identical equations. So infinite solutions for that. Okay. And let's look down here. We're going to replace the value of x in for x into our other equation. So 4 and the substituted value of x is going to be 2y plus 3 minus 8y equal to 12. We can go and distribute. That's going to give us 8y plus 12 minus 8y equals 12. 8y minus 8y, that's 0. That's 12 equals 12. So I'll let you write down what you think the solution will be for that. And I did want to go over one that is not going to have a solution, what that looks like. I'm going to place the value of x or y into y in my equation here. So that's going to give us 6x minus 3. Instead of y, I'm replacing it with 2x minus 5. Um, let's distribute that negative 3 into both parts of the parentheses. That gives us 6x minus 6x plus 15 equals 9. Now our x is going to simplify to 0, and I'm left with 15 equals 9, which it does not. Okay, so 15 does not equal 9. Um, so this is false, which means there's no solution to this one. Okay, now we've got elimination. Um, elimination means we are adding two equations together and we need exact opposites coefficients. Exact opposite coefficients. What that means, exact opposites. So the same number, but one is positive, one is negative. So an example would be like 5x and negative 5x. Exact same number, different signs. Um, we could also have exact opposites for y. So you could say like 7y and negative 7y. So that are, those are, well, that, that is what exact opposite coefficients are. So looking at our first equation, 
we have a negative 3, positive 3. Those are exact opposite coefficients. So we can go ahead and add the equations together without having to do any multiplying. Exact opposites become 0. A negative 4y and a negative 1y is negative 5y equal to negative 5. We'll divide by negative 5 on both sides. And y is equal to 1. Once we know our value for one of our variables, we can plug that into either equation. Um, I'm going to plug that into the bottom equation. 3x minus 1y, or just y, equals negative 4. And so remember, our y was 1. We can add 1 to both sides. 3x equals negative 3. And x equals negative 1. Okay, on to our next equation here. So again, remember we need exact opposite coefficients. So if we think about 7x and 4x, well, I can't multiply 7 by anything to make it 4, and I can't multiply 4 by anything to make it 7. Let's see if the y's are easier. So we've got a negative 2y, and we've got a positive 1y, essentially. So we can make both of those 2's if we want to eliminate them. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to multiply this bottom equation by 2. And if I multiply it by 2, this would become a 2y here. And then 2y and negative 2y would become 0. So that's exactly what I want. So I'm just going to multiply it by a regular 2. It's already positive, and the other 2 is already negative. So that's great. So this equation is being multiplied by 2. That gives me 8x plus 2y equals 38. I didn't do anything to my other equation, but I'm just going to rewrite it. 7x minus 2y equals 37. All right, so now our equations are set up to go ahead and add them. Okay, so let's add our x's together. Um, when we add our x's together, it's going to be 15x. We'll cancel those out, and let's add 37 and 38, and that's going to be 75. We're going to divide by 15 on both sides. And x is going to equal 5. Now that we know x, we can plug that back in, solve for y. I'm going to plug it into this bottom equation. That one seems the easiest, but any equation would work. So we're going to do 4x plus y, which is 5, equals 19. Subtract 5 on both sides. <clears throat> um, and 4x is going to equal 14. Okay, I thought I might have made a mistake. <laughs> X was 5, and I plugged it in for Y. I had to pause myself just to see, okay, what did I do? Not that answers can't be negative, but or can't be decimals, but I didn't think this one was in particular. So be very careful when you're plugging it in. We have X as 5. So I want to put that in the X spot. So it's 4 times 5 plus Y is equal to 19. So that's going to be 20 plus Y is equal to 19. We can subtract a 20 on both sides. And that's going to give us Y equal negative 1. So our solution for this would be 5, negative 1. We have our X and then we have our Y. Okay. Um, looking at our next set of equations, we want to eliminate either the X's or the Y's. So I'm going to multiply to make the X's both 10s. All right, so that would be easy. I call this kind of my flip-flop method. I multiply the top equation by 5. I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 2. And luckily, one of them is already positive and one of them is already negative. So let's go ahead and multiply everything out. So 5 times 2 is 10x. 5 times negative 6 is negative 30y. And 5 times 12 is 60. And then in my bottom equation, I'm multiplying everything by 2. That's negative 10x, a positive 30y, and a negative 60. Okay, so now let's see what happens when we add everything together. We're going to get 0, 0, and 0. We're going to end up with 0 equals 0. These equations basically are kind of identical. We call this infinite solutions. This is a true statement. So infinite solutions. Everything simplifies out and... Uh, becomes zero. 
Okay, and in our next set of equations here, I'm just going to multiply this top equation. I'm going to make the x's both 2's. I'm going to multiply this by 2, but if I multiply it just by 2, I need it to be a negative because I want them to be exact opposites, not the exact same number. So exact opposites. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x, negative 2 times negative 3y, positive 6y, and a negative 14. And then we've got our second equation, which we did not have to change at all. Now, when I add them together, x's eliminate, y's eliminate. But on the right side, I'm left with negative 2, which is not a true statement. Okay, so this is false. This means there is no solution here. Okay. Um, and then question 4, given a system of equations, how would you decide which method to use to solve it? So when would you use substitution and when would you use elimination? So I'm going to let you kind of put your answer here, but substitution, let's kind of scroll back up. You'll notice that most of these equations here, substitution, one of the equations says x equals, one of the equations says y equals, at least, or both of them say y equals. So that would be an easy equation to use substitution. Um, however, if I saw a question like this where they both said y equals and there's fractions, I might say, hey, I want to graph that instead. I don't want to set those equal to each other necessarily. You can set them equal to each other, but it just might be a little bit more work with all the fractions. Okay. Um, so that's when you want to use substitution. And then I would say using elimination when you can easily eliminate variables or make them exact opposites of each other. Okay. And then in our last problem here, I'm just going to help you get started with the setup of these equations. And then um, you'll be finishing these up yourself. So we have Miss McDartnell bought some snacks. We've got cheese and salami. Uh, so when we have our um, x equals, let's say cheese, and let's do y equals salami. So that's when we're comparing two different values, okay? So three pounds of cheese, so that would be 3x, and 1.5 pounds of salami, so y and that's going to equal 22 or 2550 so that's 3x plus 1.5y equals 2550. Now our other equation that we're creating is we have two pounds of cheese and 4.5 pounds of salami. So we have got 2x plus 4.5y is equal to 45. So now that you have your two equations, um, you can set them up to eliminate. I think the easiest strategy here would be to make both of these sixes. So my recommendation would be multiplying this bottom equation by three, top equation by two, and make one of them negative, and then we'll make the top equation negative. So rewrite both equations and eliminate to solve for x and y, and then write your answer in context here. Okay, and then our last question, um, we have some action figures here, or clown figures, actually, sorry. Um, Ms. Cossover and Mr. Jacobs. Um, so Ms. Cossover has 20 and buying six more per week. So you notice this is kind of a rate of change. So let's define our X and our Y. Um, y would be the number of figurines to start. Okay. Number of figurines. And then our Y, I guess I would say total number. So let's just make sure we put total under that, total number of figurines. And then our X is the number of weeks. So each week it looks like they're both getting more. So number of weeks. So we're gonna create an equation for both of them. So for Ms. Cossiver, um, six per week, that would be our rate of change. And starting out with 20, that's the starting value. And then for our other equation here, we've got Mr. Jacobs has 64, but he's slowing down and getting two more per week. So that would be 2x plus 64. So I would solve this using substitution. Google has set the equations equal to each other, solve for x and then solve for y, and state your answer in the context of the problem.